Okay, welcome to part one of this tutorial series. Um, in this video, I think we're going to cover pretty much everything, as the number of modifications is fairly small, and it shouldn't take too long just to implement this quickly. Um, I've removed all of the sort of cookie-related code from the script. Uh, if you if we go back to this, see I've got these four um, four files open. You should recognise this code from the previous tutorial series. Um, might be slightly different order in some places. That's because I messed around with it testing this first and sort of forgot to save the originals so hopefully you'll notice what's going on it should be fairly similar um, I've, just, I've removed all the HTML as well so we're just going to add in the checkbox this is something I want to talk about briefly for checkboxes and we're going to get onto the cookie code if you like um, we're only going to be modifying these four files if you remember before there were four pages and two back end sort of files um, so for those you're going to need to go back and watch the full user system register and login tutorial um, so let's just quickly add a new paragraph tag oops and um, we're going to give it a give uh, add a label for the set cookie input which we'll add in a moment I'm just going to call this uh, we'll, the label's going to be remember Remember me. End the label tag. Remove that dot. I'm just going to add the input. Right, input <laughs> type is going to be checkbox. The name is going to be set cookie. And this is going to be a sort of um, boolean one or zero value, um, like whether or not we're going to set the cookie basically uh, whether or not the user wants to be remembered um, the ID has to be set cookie equal to this for thing um, and the value we're just going to set equal to one so if we go back to our page now and hit reload uh, you see we get this remember me box we also have a HTML error for some reason uh, let's just find out why that is uh, let's see Reference the non-existent ID set cookie. I, I've probably spelled set cookie wrong. Uh, yes, I call the ID cookie set cookie. Read the page now. HTML, HTML error gone. Okay, so now we need to make this functional. At the moment, it's still working in the session system that we had before. So basically, what, what we want to do is we just scroll up to the top of our file where we did all these checks before. Um, once we've determined that none of these errors occurred. We want, and we log the user in here by setting this session variable. We want, oops, I mean to do that. We want to check here if the user wants to use cookies, and if they do, we want to set two cookies: one for the username and one for the password. Um, ah, see, yeah, there's something I'm gonna need to mention later. Ignore that. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is do an if statement. Um, we're gonna check if the assert if the um, post cookie variable is set cookie variable is set um, the reason for this is because um, when the box isn't ticked the post variable will not be sent at all sometimes it won't be populated some browsers differ on how they handle this some will send zero and some will send just nothing at all so we're going to check if um, the post variable is set using the set function, like so, and we're also going to make sure that the post variable is one in case the browser has sent has sent it and it sent something other than the value. So we're going to check if post set cookie equals one, like so. And if that is true, we're just going to set two cookies. We'll do that using the set cookie function. Um, in fact, it takes quite a lot of parameters, but not all. Some of them are optional. We're going to be setting the first three. So we're going to do set two cookies, set cookie, set cookie. Um, the first parameter is the name of the cookie variable, which is going to be username, spelt right. The second parameter is its value, which is just going to be the value they entered, spelt right as well. And the final one is the time we want it to expire. And this is a uh, Linux timestamp, uh, which we can get the current time using time. 
and then obviously we don't want it to expire now so we need to add on some seconds uh, so what we're going to do is add on one week's worth of seconds so we're going to add on 604800 which I googled earlier and that's the number of seconds in a week um, the way, um, this means that if they don't log in for a week their cookie will expire and they will have to re-log in um, obviously you can make this time longer or shorter if you like uh, so yeah that's that um, we also need to set a similar cookie which is going to be the password so I've just copied that line down so I don't have to type it all out again I'm going to set this password cookie variable and set that equal to the post password variable with the same expiry time now as I mentioned in the first part of this tutorial um, the cookie is not a secure storage location like the session is um, the user can easily get to the cookie data JavaScript can access the cookie data uh, so we don't want to store the plain text password so we are going to store the result of the SHA1 hash if you remember in the first um, series on this idea the first user registration system series um, we talked about SHA1 hashes and we um, oops wrong file in our back-end file the valid credentials function converts the password to an SHA1 hash so we're storing the result of this in the um, cookie so we can use that directly in the query um, what this means though is that uh, for the login page where we do valid credentials like with that passing in the plain text password um, when, well, when we want to use the valid credentials f function on the cookie we don't want to be passing in the plain text password we want to be passing in the SHA1 hash which is the reason I had that little um, I had the SHA1 function there a moment ago and I removed it because I should have done before I started the video but anyway, um, so what we need to do is remove the SHA1 here and replace it with MySQL real escape string because the user can tamper with the cookie so we don't want to pass in something we just assume is secure because it's we've saved an SHA1 hash doesn't mean that the user's browser is replying with the hash they could be replying with an S SQL injection string so we do need to escape this now. So we've just replaced SHA1 with MySQL real escape string. And then because now we are not um, we're storing in the database an SHA1 and we're just passing in plain um, like the plain text username and password, we need to convert anything we pass to this function for the password variable to an SHA1. Um, so in the login script we need to change post password, which is the plain text password, to the SHA1 hash of the plain text password. In terms, of, in terms of efficiency, this is basically the same thing. Uh, it's just that now we can use this function um, either passing in the sort of stored hash or the, uh, the hashed version of a stored plain text variable. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I don't think it's too complicated. So yeah. Um, now that is actually it for this file. Um, we've created the cookie login. So now, if the user ticks the set cookie box, uh, and no, if the user ticks the remember me box, uh, this condition will be true, and these two cookies will be set. So what we need to do now is process this, um, process like the fact if the s if the cookies exist, we want to set the session variable and log the user in. Uh, I'm going to do this in the init file because we want it to happen on all pages. We don't want the user to have to visit the login page to be remembered. We want it to happen if they try to view their profile, the index, the protected page, whatever. So we're going to go to the um, init file and this needs to be rearranged slightly because we want to access the valid credentials function uh, which requires a database connection. So what we have to do is basically copy this chunk here, remove it and then place it um, above where we're going to check for the cookie like that and we are going to be checking for the cookie in this section here. Um, so basically when you set a cookie uh, and then the user comes back to your page PHP will populate the cookie variable except PHP spells it right like so um, so remember we set the username um, username cookie variable PHP will now populate the username but again PHP will spell it right that will be populated it works in a very similar way to the session um, so this thing here is corresponding to this thing here. 
Okay, so that's that. Um, so what we want to do is we want to check if the cookie things have been set. And we're going to be checking for the co uh, cookie username and the cookie password. Although again, with correct typing, password. If they have been set, we want to check the um, f uh, check if those credentials are valid using the valid credentials function again. So we're just going to do another if statement in here, which would be if valid credentials. I spelled that right. I believe so. Find out in a moment if not. Um, and then we're going to pass in the cookie. Oh dear. Cookie username and cookie password. Because now we're not we're passing in a direct a hash directly. We're not um, passing in something which is hashed by the function. And if it is valid, what we want to do is set the session, log the user in. Session user name equals HTML entities run uh, XSS attacks. Um, I'm going to set that equal to the cookie username, like so. Um, and then what we want to do here is extend the cookie time so that it's sort of a rolling week instead of just a week later from the first time they tick the box because we don't want the user to uh, come back in like eight days of using the site every day and still have to log in again we just want them to come back after eight days of inactivity and have to log in again so what we are going to do is go back to the login page copy these two set cookie lines uh, paste them here fix the indenting and then we're just going to change post here to cookie like so, like so, and remove this hash because we're just sort of setting the cookie to itself, like so, and remove that bracket. And this number of seconds is again a full week worth of seconds. So that's pretty much it for the login system. Um, let's quickly reload the page and test this. We have no syntax errors, so that's good. So if I um, log in now with the user test and test, you see it works. If I log out, see that also works. Rid of the page, good. So if I log in with test and test again, and tick this box and hit log in, see we get logged in, still preserved. If I hit log out, you see we don't actually log out. The reason for this is because the cookie is set, it's resetting this session variable here. So when we unset this session variable, it just comes back on the next page load because of the cookie. So this is quite a good, nice, sort of inline way to test that the cookie login is working but we need to do something about the logout page so that's the last thing we're going to do we're going to go to the logout page and we are going to after we've unset the session data uh, actually makes a bit more sense here after we've unset the session data uh, we're going to check if the cookie is set like we did on the init page so we're going to just check if is set let's go cookie user name and cookie password and if both of those are set we're just going to set them to empty strings and set them to expire now um, so what we're going to do here is set cookie see it's a bit odd the way you remove a cookie is by uh, setting it to a sort of empty value you can do on set cookie thing but all that will do is remove the cookie sort of from the current script, like so down here it'll be unset, but next time you read the page you'll still have a value up here. So that doesn't work. So we're going to unset the cookie, we're going to set username to an empty string and set it to expire now. Then we're going to copy that and do the same for password. And just remove that blank line. So now if we go back to our page and hit reload, hit log out again, you see we get logged out. Uh, we could log back in which is a bit pointless, but I just should demonstrate that you can log in without the cookie. It still works for this session, using the session variable, and then we can log out again. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much that. Um, one thing you might like to do, uh, actually thinking about it, is add a condition here. So if the cookie is set and is set session username 
equals false. The reason for that is because then you won't go to the database for every page load to check if the cookie values are sort of valid. And I've got to end this here because I've already gone over 15 minutes. So thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something useful here.